the good life full of fun seems to be the idea. hey guys welcome to my kitchen another big exciting day in my kitchen what are we making you know what we're making we're gonna make a great boreo cooking italian with joe and forget about it italian meringue do i get too excited for you guys <laughs> so there's several different versions of meringue the first and most traditional form you're going to take the egg whites you're going to whip them you're going to add sugar a stabilizing agent in this case a cream of tartar or lemon juice and that's going to give you a meringue the problem with that is it's not it's not as stable as a meringue meaning that the the foaminess if you will the air that you incorporate you fold within the with the protein it's not going to give you something stable it tends to uh, fall apart at some point it tends to very sensitive to climate changes and it's certainly going to start separate get a little liquidy right and then you got another version which is the swiss meringue and the swiss meringue you're going to mix the egg whites the sh and the sugar uh, and you can add a stabilizing agent as well and then you're going to double boil or uh, use a double boiler i'm sorry and then you're going to warm it until the sugar dissolves and then you're going to whip it up and that's a much better meringue a much more stable meringue has a nice uh, texture nice flavor to it but obviously the best and i'm sure this should come to no surprise to anybody is going to be the italian version of meringue uh, and that is going to be the Italian meringue. What we're going to do there, and you'll see that a lot in Italian cooking, they'll make a sugar syrup, right? And in that, they'll use that for a lot of their drinks. They'll use that for a lot of their desserts. In this case, we're going to use it in the uh, version of their Italian meringue. So we're going to make a sugar syrup, and we're going to heat it, and then we're going to add that to the egg whites, and that's going to give you something not only that's very stable, uh, by stable, I mean it's going to hold its shape, it's going to hold that air or foaminess, and it gives it a much better texture, a much better flavor. Now what I want to do is I want to give you the Boreo version. So let me go over some ingredients with you, and I'll go over a couple of steps with you, and we'll take it from there, okay? So we're going to use uh, one and a half cups of sugar, all right? So your basic sugar is, is going to work great for you, no problem. We're going to use about three quarters of a cup of water. Now I'll always ask you guys in these cases, to use uh, bottled water if you if you can or filtered water. I don't want a chlorine or fluoride. I want no flavor of anything in there. Okay, we want this to be really beautiful on the taste bug. Something that's going to taste absolutely delicious. We're going to use six eggs. Certainly get your your uh, free range. You know, not just cage free, but free range organic eggs if you can. Eggs in this case are going to be extremely important. You want fresh eggs. Okay, so if you drop an egg in the water. If it floats, it's not so fresh. If it sinks to the bottom, it will, okay? It's a, it's a fresher egg. So just to give you a heads up, you want six whole fresh eggs, and we're gonna, and we're gonna separate the, the whites from that. We're gonna want a half of a lemon, and you can just, we're gonna use the lemon juice, and we're gonna use just a little bit of that zest, just a little bit, not to overbearing, but it's gonna be absolutely delicious. We're gonna use one teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna use a pinch of salt. I always use the sexy pinch, pink Himalayan salt. Hope you guys know what I'm talking about. Now in this case, I'm gonna use a little nutmeg. Now we're gonna make some cookies with this. We're gonna actually make some almond cookies and that'll be another video. But if you don't want the nutmeg, that's great. But I always add a, just a pinch of nutmeg. Again, it's not gonna give you so much flavor that you're gonna even taste the nutmeg per se, but it gives you that backdrop of flavor, that aroma, you know, it's gonna give you that perfuma, as they say in Italiano, and it's gonna give it something that's really beautiful. And we're gonna add some olive oil. Absolutely, you're not gonna add olive oil. Ignore my last statement, but I gotta put my shameless plug in there. I got an uh, olive grove in Italy. We make our own version of olive oil, Vito and Joe's, which is absolutely delicious. And it's in Puglia, which is Adriatic side, East Coast. And uh, it's earthy, it's peppery, uh, and it's certainly gonna give you some grassiness. It's absolutely phenomenal. I call it a trip to Italy in a bottle. You can grab it right on our Facebook. You can grab it on our uh, YouTube page. There's a link. You can also go to our website. So what we're gonna need is a couple of things here. You're gonna need a mixer. You can use a hand mixer. It's certainly gonna be a little bit more labor intensive, so something to think about. Uh, and we're definitely going to want a pot, or a pan if you will, and we're gonna want a canning thermometer. Now I've got two different types of thermometer. I have a uh, electric version 
and I got this, but this will be fine. I figure most people will probably have a traditional thermometer. We're going to go to about 100 and, uh, I'm sorry, about 240-ish on the heat. So you want softball stage 240, 245. Uh, and so just so you know, you're working with hot sugar, certainly dangerous. So this is not so great when you're heating that with the children around. So just keep a heads up on that. Always keep the handle of that, that pot or pan off to the side so nobody comes comes across and hits it, okay? So let's get started. Meet me right over here at the stove top. We're gonna start heating up some sugar. It's Italian at serpent time. So I'm gonna take my sugar, right? One and a half cups of sugar. And then I'm gonna take, just flat, you know, let it let it go flat here, okay? And then I'm gonna take some water. Now I've got about three, three quarters of a cup of water, which should be fine. And what we're gonna wanna do is just create a surface. That's absolutely perfect. Just a surface for the sugar, okay? You see how that just covers the bottom of the thermometer, right? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the heat on and I want the heat really low here. I don't wanna crank it. And the other thing I always do is I always put a timer on because sometimes what'll happen is I'll be so engrossed in my Frank Sinatra over here and I'll forget. So I set it for about six, seven minutes just as a reminder to keep an eye on it. It's gonna take about 10 or 15 minutes, typically at low heat to get up to temperature. You don't have to touch it, you do nothing. It's egg white time. All right, so a couple of keys on egg whites. One, you want the eggs to be room temperature, okay? And a little trick I learned from my grandmother is if you're gonna separate your eggs, you're gonna give them a little shake. So you, I don't know what kind of accent that was, but just give the egg a little shake, okay? And then secondly, try not to use an edge of a pan or a plate because what happens is you force the shell inside you're much more apt to get shell in your egg whites or egg yolks okay so you want to hit them on a flat surface lastly I always use clear glass containers because if you do get any shell or any particulate within the egg whites in this case the egg yolk or what have you what will happen is you'll be able to see it and get it out easily with a spoon if not you don't know it you're having this nice silky meringue it starts to get a little crunchy not the best experience okay <laughs> what the hell was that all right so we're going to just go ahead and give it a crack and then with that you're just going to push your thumb in there and open that egg up okay you're trying to get two equal sides of the shell and then i'm just going to pull it across and you get that egg yolk as clean as you can. Just pop it in there. We could use the egg yolk for something else. Now my last point is you're gonna see, see these little white pieces that a lot of times are connected to the yolk? They're basically a piece of tethering protein to protect the yolk. And they're a little bit more solid. They have a different texture. So if any come into your, into your white, just pull them out. Just pull that little piece of protein out. Time to start whipping our egg whites. So I've got my egg whites which are absolutely perfect. Again, room temp. I've got a great mixer here, okay, and I'm gonna get it going at low speed. I wanna do soft. So a couple of keys here, room temp, have everything ready. You want your bowl really clean. You want no fat or no water in there because that can inhibit the production of the whites. Uh, and we're gonna start off really slow. Another way to get some great egg whites and make some great meringue is you gotta subscribe to our channel. So right down over here in that corner, click that subscribe button, takes a second. One, it's a great way to say thank you. Number two, what it'll do is it'll just alert you every week or every two weeks when we come out with a great video. I got a, a trip coming up to Italy. You don't want to miss that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my egg whites and I'm going to, just my egg whites now, I'm going to pop those right in my bowl. So I'll start this at low. What I'm shooting for is a soft peak. So as this is foaming up, I'm going to add my lemon juice. Now I took that half of a lemon and I got a, about two tablespoons, tablespoon and a half of lemon juice, which is beautiful. That is definitely the old Italian way to do it. I'm going to use a little pinch of salt going to be perfect. I'm going to use my vanilla. Look at that. Oh, nuts and smells better than a little vanilla. Get that going. I want everything to be really well incorporated. And then I got my nutmeg. What's really neat here is you're going to look at the, the amount, the volume of egg white, which is quite small. So as this starts foaming up, what we're going to see is it'll increase. But when you add that sugar, it'll get three to four times the size of volume. So it's been a few minutes. You see how foamy that is? It's perfect, perfect foam. That's exactly what I want. So I'm just gonna let that set. All right guys, sugar's at 240, perfect. Just over a little bit of the softball stage. We got our Italian syrup ready to go. I got my mixer going, so I'm gonna crank this. Now I'm gonna keep it at about medium heat. And what I want is a slow, steady drizzle, like a thin little stream of sugar. That's why it's great to use a small pan. And just a slow, steady drizzle. And it's just magic what starts to happen here. 
All right, our sugar is in. Now I'm gonna turn up the speed. I'm gonna mix this until the bowl starts to cool down. Like I said, about eight to 10 minutes at a high speed. Now my last little trick is some lemon rind. So I'm just gonna take the lemon and I'm gonna hit it just a little, like a teaspoon, not even. And that just gives it a brightness, a flavor. Look at that. Is that awesome or what? Yeah, I'm tasting some of that. I mean, isn't that just mad? It looks like a huge, like a huge marshmallow, right? Awesome, right? Mm. Oh my God. And you get that lemon, the creaminess, the sweetness, the vanilla. And again, just the breath, just that little hint of nutmeg, oh my God. You pipe it on a pan, which is what I'm gonna do here in a few minutes. You can make some meringue cookies, put a little nuts on them, sprinkle with a little powdered sugar. Oh my God, that's what we're gonna do today. It's gonna be absolutely fantastic. And it's such a trip down memory lane with my grandmother right in the kitchen. Boy, that is absolutely awesome. That is that is the cooking Italian with Joe mm, of Italian meringue, guys. Hey, thanks so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to shut off the electronics. Spend some time with your kids in the kitchen. Make a mess. Make a disaster. Look at that. Tell me your kids wouldn't just be amazed at that. They'll want to eat the beater all day long. They'll be fighting over that puppy, right? I have so many great memories Celebrate my heritage certainly and, and setting some traditions with my grandmother. Those are memories, I'm telling you, they're irreplaceable. Your kids will never forget them. Go on Amazon or my website or our Facebook. Grab yourself a bottle of olive oil. Until next week, Good life, full of fun, seems to be